we'll be thinking this week about exactly what it means for us to fulfil our true potential. Now, if we pick up any self-help paperback or e-book, the chances are that our life's potential will be defined in terms of getting what we want out of life. But in the first 14 verses of Hebrews 4, it is defined very differently but much more precisely. The phrase used here is, entering into God's rest. That's the best thing to aim for with my life. With that, my full potential would be realised. It doesn't sound very exciting when you first hear it. Rest. Oh, goody. A bit dull sounding. I was hoping my life might come to some kind of pinnacle of achievement. I mean, it's, it's nice to rest when you're tired, but a bit boring. Until you think about the creation of the world, where after six days of creating and seeing that it is good, Father, Son and Spirit rest. And this is not the rest of exhaustion. It is the rest of satisfaction and celebration and rejoicing because it's finished. We did it. Now that is a very different kind of rest. You see something approaching that kind of rest at the end of a great triumph for a sports team or a stage production. You see people hugging each other, reveling in the joy of the plans that came together. Something like it, but nowhere near the real thing. So the promise of entering his rest means that you and I have within us a unique potential. At the end of the day, we can be included in the we did it of Father, Son and Spirit. We can be a part of that celebration. Put aside those ideas of dull Sunday afternoons from church-going childhoods and think of the noisy, happy master of the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 spreading his arms wide for a victory hug and saying, Well done, good and faithful servant. Come and share in your master's happiness. Yes, I know. But I can't read that parable without hearing the master bellowing with joy or, or seeing the hug and the master and servant jumping up and down together with delight. There are, as verses 1 to 3 make clear, two factors which combine to give our lives this unique potential. We have to hear God's voice, his call, and then we have to combine hearing with trusting and therefore with obedience. Today we hear, if today we trust and obey, then tomorrow takes on a different shape. And rinse and repeat, that is being a disciple, all the way until, well done, good and faithful servant. But what if God's people don't trust and don't obey? Verses 3 to 5 tell us that whatever we do in our time here and now, God is already at rest. His work is already finished even now while he is still at work in our lives. It blows our minds to think about, but we have to remember that we are in time and he made time. So there's no way in which Almighty God is saying, we can only hope that Duncan Wright does the job we gave him to do, or else the big celebration will have to be called off. No, he is resting. We have the God-given potential to join him there. But he is in relationship with us, and it is very much his desire that we celebrate with him. No second best. In, in verses 6 to 11, we see that the promise of entering his rest was not fulfilled in the lives of the generation that left Egypt. Although their children entered the promised land, that's not quite the same as entering into that full-blooded, we did it, of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We are not to take from Joshua and Judges the lesson that, oh well, you see, that rebellion in the desert didn't matter after all, they got there in the end. We are meant to see that when you have the opportunity before you today of entering into God's rest, you must take it with both hands. Because there is no denying our real potential. See verse 9. There is no way of achieving it without fully depending on him. Verse 10, and that involves making every effort, verse 11, to obey in faith. Because once you've heard God's call, verses 12 and 13, it's a sharp sword that cuts both ways. Meet his call with unbelief, and you have lives wasted wandering in the desert. Meet it with faith, and you have obedience, ongoing relationship with him, and entry into God's great celebratory rest. Either way, 
There is no changing the true potential of our lives against which fulfilment or failure will be measured. Does God get to say with us, we did it?